In terms of the, vun the, the vulnerabilities, I mean, the sheer volume of vulnerabilities mm. is, is increasing. From our research, we see something like 11,000 new vulnerabilities uh, yeah. coming up every month. So that in itself is a huge challenge. But yeah, I think that the, you know, there's a, there's a well-documented set of, uh, uh, of best practices within organizations that, that, that the modern day CISO has put in place. But a lot of those we've seen have been tended to focus on not only just have really been focused around blocking attacks, oh. around looking at events after the uh, after they've occurred. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Gorabatra show. We have seen in cybersecurity, threat landscape has been increasing exponentially this year. And the challenge which CISOs are facing is how to manage the vulnerabilities which are getting exposed in the uh, organization and how to see the exposure of these vulnerabilities which are increasing and doing a great impact on the industry. To have this uh, discussion on this topic, we have Mark Simon. He's a global director GSI with XM Cyber, which is a global leader in hybrid cloud posture management services. Hello, Mark. Welcome to the Gaurav Batra Show. Thank you, Gaurav. So how India is treating you? Been a great week. I've been into Chennai, I've been to uh, Colombo, and now I'm in Delhi for the uh, final leg of my journey, and I'm really pleased to be here. Great. And as I have announced the today's topic about the threat landscape and the vulnerability management, what do you think CISOs are worried about these days? Well, it's a combination of factors and uh, the list is getting longer, I think. So, you know, the traditional days of a firm and fixed boundary network are, are, are long gone. Uh, the advent of home working has, has, has blurred those boundaries. The growth of cloud is increasing the number of vulnerabilities. Yeah. It's not just about vulnerabilities, though. It's about exposures and misconfigurations. Third parties are entering networks and being linked to organizations. So the CISO has a much broader attack surface. And if you add all these combination of things together, um, the, the, the challenge is only going to get bigger as we, uh, as we further advance our technology and, and networks change and evolve. And when you say about the challenges are getting bigger, what kind of challenges you've seen? Because you have been working with many customers on this, right? Mm. What what is uh, industry is going about and talking about on this challenge? In terms of the vun the, the vulnerabilities, I mean the sheer volume of vulnerabilities mm. is is increasing. From our research, we see something like eleven thousand new vulnerabilities yeah. uh, coming up every month. So that in itself is a huge challenge. But for the CISO, it's about identifying you know, which of those are really going to impact his business or her business. It's about looking at the network in terms of identifying what is going to cause a risk to my critical assets. There's no shortage of reports and vulnerabilities and lists, but we need to balance that high volume with the practicalities of resources and being able to really focus in on what's important, what will have an impact in terms of reducing risk and increasing security posture. Okay. And uh, any best practices which you like that CISOs uh, uh, should follow and these challenges can be mitigated or uh, can be reduced to some extent? Yeah, I think that the, you know, there's a, there's a well-documented set of, uh, uh, of best practices within organizations that, that, that the modern day CISO has put in place. But a lot of those we've seen have been tended to focus on not only just have really been focused around blocking attacks, oh. around looking at events after the uh, after they've occurred, and a lot of compliance checks are really about ticking boxes. And I think we've lost sight a little bit of an industry of what's really important here. And it's not just about um, uh, addressing the needs of, of frameworks and and filling in spreadsheets. It's actually about focusing in on attacks and what's going to be impactful to the business. So. What we're doing is to take a slightly different approach, which is to help and identify and look at attacks and vulnerabilities before they happen within okay. an organization. Uh, how is that possible? What, what is the different approach you are taking? Because before it happens, I think every CISO wants to do that, right? Yeah. How is that happening? Yeah, that's a good, and it's a good, good point. So look, there's no shortage of tools that will give you lists of vulnerabilities yeah. and CV scoring has been the traditional approach. But you know, that's not necessarily telling the whole story. A high CV might not be impacting your critical assets. It might 
not be causing a risk in your environment. So we need to take a different approach. We need to look at and take the role of the, the, the hacker, the attacker, yeah. and look at how these different exposures can be joined together. Um, attackers don't think in terms of individual groups or siloed businesses or just cloud or on-prem. They look at any route through, and we need to be able to take that role and be able to automate that process to look across the entirety of the attack surface, cloud, on-prem, and hybrid. And then we need to really zero in and focus on those critical vulnerabilities or exposures that are actually going to lead to a critical asset. And that reduces the workload, it focuses in on the organization and gives us the ability then to eradicate the most critical issues that are gonna cause risk and, and potential breach or ransomware, yeah. rather than just a long list, which is clearly never ending in the organization. And uh, would you like to share a case study or a use case where it has been done a bit differently some other tools were not able to do it, but the approach which we have defined actually worked well. Yeah, so multiple organizations are, you know, we work with, with, with large organizations in multiple industries, financial services, um, uh, manufacturing, industry, commercial. So I think many of the, the customers, there's one example that's, that springs to mind uh, where we saw an organization that had employed a lot of the best practices the tools and techniques within the organization um, and put in place and we're very proud of what they had. But actually when we started and looked at their environment, um, we were very quickly able to expose yeah. vulnerabilities and issues on, you know, 90 odd percent of their environment. Now that was a, a difficult message for the CISO, but rather us do that as a friendly organization than you know get breached or, or attacked. So working with them and our partners, we we're able to take the approach that I talked about, and over the course of around about three months, we were able to reduce that that 90% percentage of, of, uh, of the attack surface being breached right down to around about 3%. And that continues to be, needs to be an ongoing process. We don't rest on our laurels. Organizations change shape. New vulnerabilities, as I've mentioned, are coming into play every day, every month. But we can have significant impact in a short mm -hmm. space of time, and we can maintain that ongoing continuous nature through an automated platform. Okay, and I think uh, there are many tools available in the market and CISOs get challenged that how business, uh, you know, get ROI out of it yeah. or what we need to drive. So if uh, I come to you and say, can you help me make a business case? What will be the, your top key pointers where you would like to put this case forward for this tool of XFL? Well, we actually took that challenge, uh, we get that challenge most of the occasions. <laughs> um, you know, it's all very well finding and proving the, the issue, but somebody's got to put some money in, in, in the pot. So we worked with uh, Forrester Research and they did an independent assessment of some of our core customers. Okay. And they took and they looked exactly at a deep dive analysis of return on investment in terms of cost avoidance, reputational damage, red teaming costs, all the other things that are coming into play. And um, we found some significant savings, over 300% ROI, and something like a 90% in the reduction of the breach, propensity to be in breach, which for me is the most critical uh, point on this. So we're able to prove financially that we stand up to the test, and we're able to show that the value we give in terms of really ensuring the business continues to run and the risk is reduced on an ongoing basis. Uh, amazing, uh, Mark. I think 300%, uh, uh, it's it's really a uh, great thing which uh, my audience will definitely look forward to it. And if you want to see more deep dive and look into this, any resources you want to tell or anything which people can visit or something? Yes, we're, uh, we have a, uh, an office in, in India, so we're working with the team. We're happy to work. We have a, a very well-established network of partners. So you know, if organizations want to contact us through xmcyber.com or Mark Simmons, I'm on LinkedIn, you'll be able to easily find me. Let's connect. Let's challenge us. I, I, I encourage you to, to test us in the same way that you have. Yeah. Look at what we do. How can we bring value? And let's work together and, and see if we can uh, do what we've said we'll do. Sure, Mark, it was great talking to you and quite an insightful session. Thank you. And uh, uh, here we have a bit ritual. Uh, I would like to give you these goodies from the Gaurav Batra show. That's very kind thank of you. Thank you, Gaurav. And thank you, everyone, for joining the show. I will see you in the next episode very soon. Bye-bye. Be safe.